Hi guys. So this is a 2014 Audi 8V S3 with the 221 kilowatt motor in it. Um, I bought it at an auction as a non-runner. Um, you can see everything looks looks really good. Um, the only thing that looked wrong visibly when I bought it is radiator cap missing. Um, but it had no coolant in it and also when I checked the oil there was no oil on the dipstick So I started thinking this is probably not something small um, And luckily I bargained on replacing the motor, but as you can see everything looks beautiful Perfect car nothing wrong with it um, But then when you go underneath and you've pulled the, the chassis plate off and you find that which is the small end of the one conrod sticking through the plastic sump you do realize that uh, this is just take it out and throw this boat anchor in the bin this engine is gone um, so that's what we're going to do we'll be pulling it out stripping it see what went wrong with it see if i can still use the head try to get a used block complete bottom end or short block like the guys call it in the states um, but yeah, it's going to be an interesting journey. Okay, so I've taken the front end off. Um, there it is. Just something interesting to see. Um, if you check in there. Let's see if we can get in there with the camera. There. Check there where the, the torch is shining. You can actually see the... Wait, you can see the crank inside. It's made itself a, a older, there you can see, made itself a nice old inspection window. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That's, there, there's the crank. Hello. Okay, it's much clearer and I've stripped it a little bit more. So now there's the, there's the hole in the block. There's the water pump. There's the front of the engine. Uh, <laughs> Hello crank is seeing daylight while while it's in the car there's the balancing shaft that's the balancing shaft there um, this is the, the cable that goes to the to the water pump it also kick that obviously all the debris that came out of there kick that so I'll have to fix that I'm just happy that the water pump didn't get impact um, yeah that's what it looks like when your uh, Golf R or S3 makes an inspection all on the block all right, so we're ready to take the engine out. Um, if, like myself, you wondered if you can take out the engine without taking the transmission, seeing that you can take out, you can take out the transmission without taking the engine, but can you take out the engine without taking the transmission also out? No, you can't. Reason is, if you want to take out the transmission, yeah, there's a lot of space because the transmission you can drop to go under the main the main beam there. So that's fine this thing has not got a flex plate like a normal automatic transmission it's got a a, a spine that goes in like on a normal um, manual transmission so you need to separate the engine and the gearbox far enough apart to, to clear that so if you only want to take out the transmission you can take out the transmission and leave the engine in because the transmission you can move sideways here yeah, it will it, you can drop it and it'll go under the main beam the engine you can't um, I thought you could if you could take off this this engine mounting yeah then possibly I would have created enough space between the main beam and the engine to clear it but that that mounting there has got three bolts that holds it uh, two of them are very easy to get the to the one you're not gonna get to while the engine is in the car because it's right yeah all right so thank you Audi Volkswagen engineers you bunch are a bunch of yes let's leave it there um so engine and gearbox will come out together so that's the next step um everything is loose i must just loosen the prop shaft quickly it sits down there uh, the prop shaft there's the prop shaft you see it right on the torch there to the rear wheels this is obviously a quattro it's a s3 just need to loosen that quickly and then loosen engine mounting on the gearbox and then we'll pull it out all right, so it's out. Here's the engine with the gearbox on it. So, uh, 
is the car. And yes, you can do this job without disconnecting any of the AC hoses and lose all your Freon. So that can be done. VW or Audi will tell you impossible, but done without damaging anything. And that's what the car looks like when it's out. Exhaust is the prop shaft to the rear wheels. Front props. Just put some toilet paper around them because they're dripping grease. Uh, here's the steering rack. Oh, that's what it looks like. S3, no engine, no gearbox. So now, next step is to pull off the gearbox, uh, put the engine on the engine stand, and then strip the engine, pull the head, and see if we've still got a head. Okay, so I'm busy taking the motor apart. Uh, there you can see the inspection window. There's the crank. That's the bottom. I've just taken the sump off. Holding the sump. Where the number three cylinder Conrad came through. Um, but it looks like the rest of it, the oil pump wasn't impacted. Yes, it looks like chocolate milk inside there. Obviously, uh, water channel also got damaged and water and oil mixed. But uh, oil pickup, oil pickup screen is clean. Uh, it's just full of chocolate milk, but there's no bits and pieces in there, which is good. Um, so yeah, con continues dripping. Let's see. Okay, so the head is off. There it is. So, piston number one. Can't see anything wrong with that. Piston number two. You can't see too nice in the video, but I've looked. There's nothing wrong with that. Piston, no, piston three. There's nothing to talk about. <laughs> so uh, this is the one that. Made the inspection window. Um, just look at uh, look at that hole. If I come in from the water pump, there's my finger. That's from the water pump's hole. <laughs> I have no idea why that would have happened, but yeah, I mean you can see this whole this whole sleeve is is very much gone gone. Um, I've never seen this before. No idea. See the other other sleeves it's been standing for a long time so those are just marks um, but there's no scorching marks or anything on them they look fine and then the other thing that's a bit of a riddle is number four piston looks fine at first but then if you look there see there's some action there so I'm not exactly sure what happened there so this piston is also gone eh? I'll make a video when I pull it out obviously the sides of it will, will look bad but yeah so that's what it looks like. Uh, let's take a look at the head. Alright, so there's the head. Um, number one, no signs of any impact. Number two, no signs of any impact. Number four, the one that's also a bit of a suspect cylinder uh, piston. There's no signs of any impact on the head. The number three, where all the action happened, um, that valve is bent, you can see that. Uh, for the rest of it, other than light impact marks that you can barely feel and all the carbon that's been cleaned off very nicely um, Doesn't seem to be any damage. So I think I'm lucky and the head has survived Obviously, it'll need to go to the engineering shop for a for a skim and New valves and so on and so forth on the number three cylinder um, but I think the head the head is is, is, a, is still usable which is good, which means I'm looking for a block. Okay guys, so I got the stuff back from the engineering shop. There's the crank. I saved it, it was fine. The mains were cut 10 thou and the big ends were cut 20 thou. Uh, the head is also fine. So now here's the block. Busy putting in the new main bearings. 10 thou, uh, 0.25 millimeters over. See, there they are. So I'm going to drop the crank in now. Got the jets in. Let's replace one jet, uh, the spray jets. So yeah, let's put it in. Crank going in. Okay, so the crank is in. One main bearing, two main bearing, three main bearings, four main bearings, five main bearings. Uh, see the thrust bearings are also in. Sorry, wrong gap. There they are. Thrust bearings are in. So cranks in. Now we're gonna put the, the top bearings and we're gonna put the caps. Um, 
there's the bearings I've used. It's KS. Here's the part number. Let's put the caps and then I'm going to torque them. Okay, so the crank is in. So now we're going to tighten the, the main caps. So torque setting there is 65 Newton meters. Obviously do this one, then do that one, then do that one, then do that one, then do that one. And tighten them first, then 65 Newton meters, then plus 90 degrees. Then on the side, the middle three caps, cap two, three and four, has got bolts that go in there, one from each side. Three on this side, three on that side. Those you need to tighten 20 Newton meters and then plus 90. So the main cap 65 newton meters plus 90 the side ones 20 newton meters plus 90 degrees so cool to turn and then the crank is in okay guys so i've put the put the pistons in new pistons new con rods um show you from the bottom see there's the new pistons sorry i'm doing it upside down but new pistons new con rods um, what you want to do here is uh, you're going to torque the con rods, use new bolts, do not take a shortcut. Use new bolts on your con rods, on your big ends. Um, you're going to torque them 45, first hand tighten them, and then you're going to take them 45 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. So 45 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. So it's got brand new bearings in, oversized 10 thou over or 0.5 millimeters over brand new pistons brand new con rods okay so it's in and it it turns nicely you can turn nicely turn it around in full revolution it feels good uh, so now i'm going to put the the bottom brace of the clean the bottom brace of the of the block put that on and then i'm going to clean the the oil pump check it the oil pump is fine put that on and then i'm going to do the timing chain on the on the balancing shafts then I'll be back okay so I've put in the balance shafts and I've done the timing on the balance shafts so if you want to see the timing that's the exhaust balance shaft you can see that little notch must be across the the dark colored link and then on the intake side you've got that little dot that's across from that dark colored one then those two dark colored, colored ones just sit there and then on the crank the engine is currently sitting uh, at top dead center see that little arrow there that's on that dark link um, all these fasteners on the on the guides gets torqued to 20 newton meters the main tensioner here gets torqued to 65 newton meters um, oh that's what it looks like now we're gonna put the I'm going to put the head on, see there's the new pistons, it's going to clean the surface, degrease it, then there's the head fresh from the engineering shop, what it looks like, I'm going to put this on now, torque it and then I'll be back, gasket's on, L ring, that's O equality, Okay, so the head is on, 10 brand new head bolts, um, obviously you're going to torque them, well not obviously, you are going to torque them 40 Newton meters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, in that sequence, torque them 40 Newton meters, then after you've torqued them 40 Newton meters, check them again that they are still 40 Newton meters, you'll find the ones in the middle, you'll need to tighten a little bit more, and then plus 90 degrees, quarter turn, and plus 90 degrees again, so head bolts, use brand new head bolts, 40 Newton meters, um, in this sequence, one, two, the normal sequence, work the middle out, and then plus 90 degrees, and plus 90 degrees again, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just busy mocking up the, the cams, I'm going to put the, the top plate on now, I'm just going to clean it and seal it. Um, it's quite cool, it, it's got these little grooves where it shows you where you got to put the silicon. And around there, so put the silicon, not there, that, I don't know what that's for. But you're going to put the silicon around the spark plug and then obviously follow the lines around it. Okay. Um, 
So inlet cam, it's just a normal cam. It's got variable timing, obviously. It's got the solenoid and everything. But it's just got one lobe per, per valve. But the exhaust cam, also variable tam timing. This is CJX, so both are variable timing. But if you look at the exhaust cam, it's got two lobes. There you can see it's got a higher lobe and a lower lobe. And it's got solenoids that sit in the cover that run in those grooves that move these around. So this is a very, very expensive uh, camshaft. And if you ever handle it, these things, make sure not to move them too far. There's balls in here that lock them. If you move them too far, when they're out, you can move them too far and the balls will jump out. And you're in for a very expensive camshaft. Um, there, once again, you can see the two different lobes. See the high one and the low one. So, only on the exhaust cam. But both cams have got variable timing. Okay, so I've assembled the motor. Um, it's now ready to come off the engine stand onto the engine crane. Then I'm going to put the gearbox on, or the transmission on. And then it's going to go back into the car. So, there's the, the completed engine. Turbo is still very nice and tight, no play. So, yeah, next step, put transmission on, then put in the core. Okay, so the engine and transmission has been married again. And now we're ready to put this lamp back in the car. Okay, so the motor is in, motor and transmission is in. That's what it looks like. Hell of a lot of plumbing on this car. Um, yeah, so now I'm gonna swing the nose on, tighten the nose down, put oil in it and uh, hope all is well. Guys, so I've put it back together, it's back in the car, and there it is, it's running perfectly. No engine lights, idling smooth, perfect. Um, I just want to ask you if you want to, and if you got any value out of this video, I'd really love it if you would um, like and share and subscribe, that would really help me. And there you are, hopefully you got some value out of this. Thanks for watching, I appreciate that. Cheers.